Software Architecture Patterns Narration One of the most critical decisions you'll make as a software architect or developer is choosing the right architecture pattern. This choice will impact your application's scalability, maintainability, and your team's productivity for years to come. Today, we'll explore six fundamental software architecture patterns that every developer should understand. Choosing the right architecture isn't about following the latest trends or picking what seems most modern. It's about carefully aligning your architectural decisions with three key factors, your application's specific requirements, your team's expertise and capabilities, and your long-term goals for scalability and maintainability. Let's dive into six of the most widely used architecture patterns and understand when each one shines. First up is the monolithic architecture, the traditional approach that many developers start with. In a monolithic system, your entire application is built and deployed as a single unit. Everything lives together, your user interface, business logic, and data access layers all bundled into one cohesive package. The beauty of monolithic architecture lies in its simplicity. It's straightforward to develop, test, and deploy. Your team doesn't need to worry about complex distributed systems or network communication between services. However, as your application grows, this simplicity can become a limitation. Scaling becomes challenging because you have to scale the entire application rather than just the components that need it. Making changes can also become risky as a bug in one part of the system can potentially bring down the entire application. That said, many successful companies have adopted what's called a modular monolith, keeping the single deployment model while organizing code into well-defined modules for better maintainability. Next, we have serverless architecture. Next, we have serverless architecture, a paradigm that's revolutionizing how we think about infrastructure. With serverless, developers can focus purely on writing code while the cloud provider handles all the infrastructure management, including automatic scaling based on demand. Serverless extends beyond just functions as a service, or FOS. It includes managed databases, authentication services, messaging systems, and more. The promise is compelling. Reduced operational overhead, automatic scaling, and pay-per-use pricing. However, serverless isn't without trade-offs. You're essentially trading control for convenience. You might face vendor lock-in, cold start latencies, and limitations on execution time and resources. But for many applications, especially those with variable workloads, these trade-offs are worth the benefits. Next, we have event-driven architecture. Event-driven architecture represents a fundamental shift in how components communicate. Instead of direct synchronous calls, components communicate asynchronously through events. When something happens in one part of your system, it publishes an event, and other interested components can react to it. This pattern is perfect for building reactive real-time applications. It provides excellent scalability and resilience because components are loosely coupled and can operate independently. It's particularly powerful when combined with microservices or when building streaming applications. The challenge with event-driven systems is complexity. Debugging can be difficult when you're tracing events across multiple components. Ensuring event consistency and managing event ordering can also be challenging. But when implemented correctly, EDA enables highly scalable and flexible systems. Next, we have microservices architecture. Microservices architecture breaks down your application into a collection of small, independent services, each responsible for a specific business function. Each service can be developed, deployed, and scaled independently. This pattern offers tremendous flexibility. Different teams can work on different services using different technologies. You can scale only the services that needed, and deployments become faster and less risky because you're only deploying small, focused services. However, microservices introduce significant complexity. You need to handle service-to-service -service communication, data consistency across services, distributed monitoring, and orchestration. The operational overhead can be substantial, especially for smaller teams. Microservices work best when you have the organizational structure and tooling to support them. Next, we have Domain-Driven Design, or DDD. Domain-driven design is unique in our list because it's not an architecture pattern itself, but rather a software design approach that profoundly influences architectural decisions. DDD structures her system to align closely with your business domains. You define bounded context, clear boundaries around specific business domains, and model your software to reflect how the business actually works. DDD emphasizes domain modeling, strategic design, and close collaboration between developers and domain experts. 
When done well, it significantly reduces technical debt and improves maintainability because your code structure mirrors your business structure. Changes in business requirements translate more naturally into code changes. Finally, we have layered or end-tier architecture, a structured approach where your application is divided into logical layers. Typically, you'll have a presentation layer, business logic layer, and data access layer, each with specific responsibilities. This pattern provides excellent separation of concerns and improves maintainability. Each layer has a clear purpose, and changes in one layer shouldn't affect others. It's a pattern that many developers find intuitive and easy to understand. However, layered architecture can introduce performance bottlenecks due to rigid dependencies between layers. A request might need to pass through multiple layers even for simple operations, which is why more modern patterns like microservices or event-driven architectures are often preferred for new applications. The key takeaway is that no single architecture fits every use case. Each pattern comes with its own set of trade-offs, and the right choice depends entirely on your specific system requirements, team capabilities, and business constraints. A startup might begin with a monolithic architecture for speed and simplicity, then evolve to microservices as they scale. A data-heavy application might benefit from event-driven architecture, while a traditional enterprise application might work perfectly with a layered approach. The best architects don't just pick one pattern and stick with it. They understand the strengths and weaknesses of each approach and choose the right tool for the job. Sometimes they even combine multiple patterns within a single system, using different approaches for different parts of the application. Remember, architecture is not a one-time decision. It's an ongoing process that evolves with your application, your team, and your business needs. The best architecture is the one that serves your current needs while providing a clear path for future growth. Which of these architecture patterns have you worked with the most? And more importantly, which challenges have you faced when implementing them? Understanding these patterns is just the beginning. The real learning comes from applying them in practice and learning from both successes and failures.